evolving when he came to me with this idea. He said, how do we integrate three businesses, right? So today, if you're a fan, and you can substitute in here entertainment or gaming, right? So any sports or any entertainment thing is totally passive, right? You sit back and you watch or you yell at the TV, uh, whether it's a concert, golf, pick whatever you want, right? Super passive, you can't impact it. And gaming is one way. I mean, you could say it's two ways, you can get multiple people playing, but you're not actually doing anything to be impactful on what's happening in the game. Similarly with, um, I, I'm in a fantasy, sorry, fantasy, you know, you pick your players, you pick, but like they're not picking you, you know? And gaming is all virtual. It can be multifaceted, but it's not real, right? And so our fan experience, what we've done with YCF is that we've made it interactive, immersive, and impactful. So we have taken three distinct industries, sports, gaming, and technology, and we brought them together for the first time. So these are photos of our live, we had two football teams, we live streamed it, uh, we did gaming head-to-head, -head. I'm gonna let you play with this, so you're gonna see it all. Um, and you were impacting, you were getting coach plays sent to your phone, you were voting on them, and you were impacting it. So we've taken three industries and we brought them together for the first time. So the best way to see and I'm going to let you play it so you guys can get a feel is how it works. And we own, we have four patents on this technology, and there's a whole bunch of back end applications to the front end app, and I'll show them all to you guys. So, what happens is, our, in a football game, if you are a coach of a, of a football team, you have all your plays on a call sheet. So, depending on whatever, whatever's happening on the field, you have a set of plays that you want the players to run. So, in our business model, those plays are on an iPad, and given the situation, it's Q1 and it's first and 10, the coaches sends a selection of three plays out to anyone who's downloaded the app. Mm -hmm. It comes to your phone, coaches selecting the plays, and you're live streaming it in your phone too. We live stream with no latency, absolute zero. We found a company in Chicago, no latency. We're talking, we were with Turner Sports the other day because they're trying to figure out how to get zero latency. Everyone else right now is in the high teens to low 20s. Yeah. Three plays come to your phone. You have 10 seconds to tap on that play. So you can be sitting at a bar or you could be at a location or you could be at home. That play, you pick the play. It goes back up to Amazon, goes back down to the coach's iPad and it says the fans want this play. So that's the one that now the coach radios to the quarterback and they run it on the field. And then what happens is, if you voted with the majority, you want that play to do very well, because this is when the, where the gaming comes in. Because now they're gonna run that play on the field. If the play does well, we're gonna score you, just like in fantasy. We're gonna give you points if you voted with the majority and the play did well. If you didn't vote with the majority, you want the defense to stop them and do bad, because we're gonna give you against the grain, another gaming element to get to the gamers. And then also the third way you can rack up points is if you think like the coach. So if that, these three plays came back and the coach said, dang it, this is the one I wanted the fans to vote. They didn't. If you voted with this one with the coach, we're gonna give you an extra bonus because you thought like the coach, you're following the coach along. So we immediately score you in real time, and then you see exactly where you are on the leaderboard with everybody else who's playing. Or you can, if you set up competitions, just like fantasy, if you set up head-to-heads or you set up leagues, you're going to get your score in real time. So you can override the coach if there's enough critical mass? Yes, you coach. always override the coach. Oh, wow. But remember, these are his three best plays. It's yeah. his playbook. Yeah. So he's picking, yes. Right. And he's the one with the intuition on the ground, and then so all of a sudden the crowdsource decision comes in and he says, okay, we're doing that one. That's right. Oh, cool. Right. So we do all of this pretty much happens in a 21 second cycle. Wow. And we do it, we did it for two hours, four weeks in a row, no tech issues, no streaming issues, no data compilation issues at all. I'll let you guys play with it. And what happens is, what we're doing is we're engaging fans 
so that they can see the game on the field where you call the plays in a live game so now it's not passive, right? And they're executing that on the field so you're impacting it, but with the game within the game, we're giving you fantasy and gaming because we're giving you scoring ability to compete with your friends. You look confused. Yes. I don't understand the way it works. The, the part I'm confused is like you really say is a real game now is on. Yes. And the you basically you're trying, I think this um, play like this will work better. And you basically tell the coach to do this? No, so the coach is basically saying, so yes, yeah, so we, we hosted our own games with our own players. Okay. And we trained our players and the coaches came up with their playbook of plays. Okay. So they're all quality plays, it's not gimmicky. Okay. And then we used social media, we used our marketing partners and our media partners to say to you, our game is starting, it's every Monday night at 8 o'clock, ah. get in the game. Okay. Just like a TV show. Okay. And then you got in the game, you watched it, live streamed it, you either live streamed it through the phone on our website or we did it with Barstool Sports. Uh-huh. And every time a play was happening, the coach would push a selection of plays to you and you had a vote. Okay. And we did this cycle over and over again for two hours during a live football game. Okay. Make sense? Uh, yeah. But once, what if yeah. you, once you get too many users, like if you get a lot of users, do you think that can still work now? Absolutely. We've scaled it right now. I mean, if you think about most gaming apps and, you know, so put it this way. If you're watching an NFL game, you get you know, 10 to 15 million viewers watching it. But the lower you go down, you're not getting that many. So we, we got 300,000 votes okay. was happening, which was excellent for us. No one knows who we are or what yeah. we're doing. But, um, you know, we could scale this. It's a super easy, we're using a local development company here in yeah. Boston, Cantina, and we'd scale it. Okay. No So from a marketing and positioning standpoint, we are basically saying to ourselves, this is where the future is. Any good two by two, if you've been to any good apps in business school, you need a good two by two, right? And so we're saying to the world, the future is in fan control being absolutely high as consumers. We want to control everything. It's mm -hmm. the me generation. And we want our experience to be live. We want it to be immersive. Right? And so over here, this is where you have today's world of sports, of entertainment, right? It's all live, but we just sit back passively. We can't control it, right? I mean, this is the, re you know, this is the place where we all spend way too much time. Uh, there's so much content out there, right? It's not real. You can't control it, but by God, we're sinking my life, I can tell you that right now. Um, I just got sucked into the Americans, and I'm like, Binge watching that. Oh my god. You watch The Crown? Oh god, love The Crown. Yeah. <laughs> That's long gone. Uh, thank God my husband has me on podcast now. I feel like I'm bringing it up a little bit more with some podcasts <laughs> instead of just TV. Um, and this is your the gaming world, right? Mm -hmm. Booming down here, yeah. right? And if you, you have had over the last 10 years kind of this in the middle reality TV booming, The Bachelor, all that crap. I mean, sorry, I say that with love, but I mean it. Um, Dancing with the Stars, I have three girls, they're addicted to it, right? But you can't, it's live, they're trying to get you to impact it by like tweeting, but you're not, you're still not controlling it. And we believe that, you know, this site, if you're in this segment up here, you're in trouble. Because the next generation is not going up there and they're not spending money up there. They're down here, right? The NFL is in so much trouble. They don't have a millennial audience, period. Mm -hmm. They're not watching it on TV, they're not going to them because it's too expensive. Golf, aging, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we believe that the future is here. How do you allow the next generation to be about them? So that's why we're, our technology is about Fan. It's an outward in instead of inside out. It's about the fan's ability to impact something that's live and control it. That makes sense? So we did our first to get this off the ground because 
we would go out talk to investors and they'd be like, that sounds really cool, have you done it? And we're like, nope. So we had to go do it. So I literally built two football teams. I had former NFL coaches. I had 100 players. I had a full football staff for seven weeks in Florida and I ran four games, two hour live streamed. So I had a full football production. They trained every day. I had four Thursday night games. I had about 400 people on location during the games voting fans, and then I had fans every, everywhere else just voting. And then I used all of my back-end technology, which I'll show you guys in a minute, to make it work. So we literally did, in our first series, the football, we had about um, four Super Bowl, former Super Bowl players, so we had quality football. The coaching staff was all like kind of legendary, retired coaching staff, so they had great names with them. All the players had been on like an NFL team and they were looking to get back on a team. We had uh, over almost 10,000 voters who were consistently fans voting and we processed about 300,000 votes um, going back and forth through the system. We had about 40,000 viewers every week just watching the live stream. Some of them were voters too, but they were watching, which is pretty good if you look at Nielsen ratings for like startups, or even if you go on Twitch and you look at some really high-end game, you doesn't get that. Um, and our average viewing time, which we thought was awesome too, was 45 minutes. Again, you don't get that type of attention span. Um, and then we gave away cash prizes. So we also made it like a FanDuel draft game where like you could be eligible for cash prizes if you were voting and you were calling good plays and scoring. So we had awesome feedback, like literally people who were doing it were like tweeting it out, you know, no one knew who we were, you know, make sure you get on it, um, they're giving away money, this was awesome, this guy like took a snapshot of his score and tweeted it out, like we literally got, I mean, I am an analyst by trade, so I'm looking to be negative and beat the crap out of things, and like we got, the tech, nothing broke, Everyone got their votes, like it was really flawless. Now, is there a ton of stuff we can fix? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we heard things like people wanted some new features, like it's an event-driven app. So we changed, the app looks like this now, it's different from what you'll see. Um, so you can like add it to your calendar so that you don't forget. Like people were saying to us, oh, we forgot the game was going on because we're not on NBC. We're not on Fox, we're not on ESPN because they have too much of a delay. I can't. Like CBS Sports wanted to wanted to broadcast our games, I couldn't do it because they have a 27 second delay, and that cycle, if you remember, I, I can't afford any delay. It has to be real time. Um, so we have new features. Uh, we've added more. Um, oh, the other thing, people, 45 minutes. They want each quarter of a football game to be a game in and of itself. So we change everything into quarterly games. So at the end of every quarter, you can share your score, you can invite friends for the next quarter, or you can say, I don't want to vote for the next quarter. It's too taxing. Um, and we have different, uh, we're using much different things. Last time we used Barstool, which if you don't know who they are, they're a pretty prominent uh, sports media company. So they were awesome in getting us like 40,000 viewers. But we're realizing now in the age of everything changes so quickly that these micro influencers, we need these people who are out there on the social channels who can like, you know, very quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we, I don't even know how to, we all know who they are without describing them, <laughs> right? Um, so that's kind of what we did. Our long-term strategy is to continue to do our series with football, but we're gonna branch out into licensing. So what we're finding is, if you remember that top left-hand quadrant, a lot of those properties up there are like, holy crap, how do we engage our fan base more? So uh, the Pro Bowl is looking at it, Top Golf, um, some of the colleges and other football leagues are saying, hey, maybe I want to license this technology because it can help me, you know, it's more innovative from a marketing perspective to get to our target audience. It helps us integrate the physical facility with the people who are fans who could be anywhere at home or at a bar. Um, it, it is absolutely DVR proof. That's why people like it. You can't DVR this. It's live. If you want to vote and rack up scores and compete with your friends, you got to be watching it. 
so they love that. Um, they also love these, the Pro Bowl and Top Golf, because it gets to the millennial audience, mm -hmm. right? They don't have them yet. Um, it positions them as an innovator. And the other thing, too, it's a sponsorable asset. So one of the things we're talking about, you'll see, is like for the Pro Bowl, you know, they can do fan play calling experience. They can take their partners and put their ads. We have uh, inline ads, mobile ads, and our app, same with Top Golf. You could connect the physical top golf. They have a huge fixed cost in their physical buildings. If anyone's ever been to a top golf or, or you've seen it, and how do you integrate the physical place with anyone who's a golfing person if they're at home and get some ad revenue, et cetera, out of it? So that <clears throat> is kind of the. I was, you were starting to ask all kinds of questions that I knew I had answers to. So I'm hoping this kind of got to your. Um, got to your question. And I can show you guys, I can fire it up and show you the whole system, but. Definitely. Well, so yeah, now I have the second order magnitude of questions. Yeah. So questions or thoughts or people want to eat while they chat? I mean, it sounds like you might have found a way to just go OTT. Definitely. The only reason you need, I definitely, the only reason I need them is think, trying to get the millennials to find the game. Yeah. And, and so what was the feedback at, like, I'm sure you can post action surveys and stuff like that. Yes. Um, the engagement rate, sort of like call, call, for, call for this as a product, was it like strong or was there something It was strong. The, the, the biggest negative, if you will, is that football is expensive. Yeah. Right? So if you're an investor looking at this, like, they want something that rides on someone else's capital, like Uber or Airbnb, right? They don't have any fixed costs. So that's why for us, licensing is a good future road because it's expensive to put football teams together. We only hit yeah. two. Yeah. Insurance, equipment, it is outrageous. And you, but you feel like this is a platform now for someone else to come on and say, well, I have these assets right. that are struggling and I, and I want to use your system that's to right. and give it an infusion of life. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I hear Marshall McLuhan in the back of my head going like, hot and cold media, like that. Yeah, yeah. So you'll be hosting the whole back end as well? Yeah, so we can host the whole back end. I'll show it to you. You want to see it? Yeah, sure. All right, so I have three phones here. Um, so you'll notice this is the old version of the app. This is what we use, and this is what the app looks like now. Um, so we have like an ads to calendar. This is like video content. We've changed it, but it still works. So you can share with a bunch of people. If you click on the hamburger nav, you'll see what your profile name is. And then uh, you can invite, Good so your Giga, I don't know, how, I had my okay. insurance set it up. Um, so if you hit on the that, you can see what your name is. Mm -hmm. And then you can set up a head-to-head. -head. So click on the head-to-head, -head, and you can create a head-to-head -head competition, and you can search, what's your name? S I E D E V B S I E S I E D E V E V. No, not two E's. Just, oh, sorry, sorry. That's right. Just do V V. There you go. So he's going to send you a head to head right now and send it. You change it. No, it will come up. You're on the Wi Fi. So that's how long it took to go up and, and come back down. Yeah, there is. Did you set up? What's your guy? What's your name? Um, oh, you accepted my challenge. My name. Go <laughs> hit the. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, G G guy. Okay, so we've got a head to head challenge here. And you can set up a league. We fixed it. It's a lot slicker. What are you, G guy? Yep. G G A. Okay, what's that? A A T. Uh, there we yeah. go. Let's send your head to head. Then you can go to leagues. Okay, so back to the main So screen. there are three ways you can compete by yourself on the leaderboard, head to head, or you can set up a league, right. So then the other one is I'll go here to a league. So I'm here, so I create league. So these are all my back end technologies. So I have a game cast that does the quarters, tells you it's in the first second quarter, but we're gonna integrate that with the broadcast now. Then I have the play manager. This is like a referee who tells you when the plays can get sent. 
This is the coach. These are all the plays that the coach is dealing with. Right here. So we're running all this in the back end. This all, these are all the plays. So Julie, I'm, I'm a fan and I'm sitting at the you bar right now and, and we're just waiting for like a, a thing to initiate, a, game, a stream right. to start? Yep. Okay. So I'm showing you the back end okay. system. Right. So this is a live stream. I'm going to throw the stream up right now. And you're going to start, you'll be able to see, we'll say watch live. There. And I see enter game. Yep, you can enter the game. How come I can't get any sound? Oh, we don't have any sound on this? Uh, HDMI, maybe. You can put the phone, put the sound on the phone. There you go. There it is. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Yeah. I grew up on the Cape. Yeah. What part is it? Yarmouth. Oh, yeah. yeah. You? So I used to go every summer to Woodsville. Oh, yeah. For research so, or for fun? Fun. That was good. So this is like our leaderboards. We were doing on the broadcast telling them who was, who was ahead on the leaderboard, who had the most yeah. points. So this is like the intro to the game. So now I'm going to get ready to start the next play. So you're going to get a pulse. OK. You should be getting a play coming. So the coaches are now picking a play to start the game. What was that? Weird. Oh, I had a crash. Really? Yeah. Going back in. Yeah. Real call football, right? Yeah. I don't need that. You can put a hat in there. Yeah, the mobile app. Yeah, I'll vote a different one. So now they're going to run. He's playing the field. And then we're going to hope it does well. And they're going to gain five yards. So I'm going to give them five yards. And if you voted with the majority, I'm going to score you right now. And now another play. Are you back in? Uh, I, I, I think I might have choose, chosen the wrong play? version of the app. Oh, oh there I am. I'm back at Sue Dev now. OK. Enter game. I'm back. So who, um, oh, who records, like? Oh, that, yeah, uh, the, that which play was done and how many yards it got. It's all in the back end system. It's right. just like a football game, so you know right. that yeah. that yard it got five yards, so we record it in our back end system, we have a tech booth. Yeah. And then we know so now they're gonna run this next play. So I didn't get the coach pick, but I did vote with the majority. So I'm gonna hope this one goes pretty well. I'm pretty sure I know what happened. So that's a pass incomplete. So that's bad. So we're going to start the next play. And I'm going to give that one that was a pass incomplete. So there's no points. But if you did not vote with the majority, you would have got against the grain point. So now you're voting again. So here you can see your play calling score, or you can click on the leaderboard and see where who, who's who's side dead. They're doing great. Oh, that, that, I think that's is that me? No, S U E Dev. Yeah. Forty four. That's me. 
Alright, so now that was a 30 yard pass plus, I'm going to add an event, so I'm scoring this all right here, plus that was a touchdown, touchdown, and I'm going to save that. So if anyone voted with that, you just got a ton of points. So now they're going to turn. So now I'm not going to go, I'm not going to keep doing it, but you could, is anyone clicking like here? Yeah, within seven seconds versus all the competitors. Yeah, yeah that is like the biggest problem. Yeah. Distribution, like if this could be on CBS Sports, like Monday Night Football or Fox, like it would be great right. because everyone would see it and you'd get to it, but you can't do the delay. I mean, look at the segment, this new segmentation, right? I mean, I... If I end up at Comic Con or E3 or any of these big conventions, mm -hmm. I'll see people walking around with a Bledsoe shirt and they're not from his That's territory, right. right? And so is there a brand new segmentation yes. that grows? That's those next millennials. Yeah. They don't so, care about so that. So again, you, you know, it's just about having the capital to jump over all that junk, right? right? Or being in a power position enough to say like, hey, you know, that's okay, we're agnostic to your like territorial stuff. That's right because we're really interested in your marquee players and what they're doing on, yeah. And getting, the, and getting the next generation of wealthy, like most, you know, stereotypical white wealthy old men who own sports teams are e egotistical and they just want to say that they could spend all that money to buy a sports team. And unfortunately, the next generation don't care about them. They only care about themselves. And so until I can get that rich, you know, stereotypical white male who bought, scoops up sports teams to realize like their future bread and butter is in that top bottom left quadrant right. of young gamers who want to, they want to be the star. Right. So that's like the battle we face right now that like we are in the door at all the right people and the right companies, uh, but whether it's a sports league or a tech company or a financial Person, but they're all they haven't shifted their minds to that top right quadrant yet. It will, we'll get there, but it's going to be a little bit of a slog. How do you make money? What's your so right now? We don't, uh, we're like any old good, <laughs> but the revenue model is, is the mobile ads. That's really what mm -hmm. investors yeah. like about our financial future. Mm -hmm. Is that no, no, thank you. Um, is that it is, um. We have a captive audience because it's DVR proof, mm -hmm. you know, and it's uh, live streamed in this device that the millennials like. Um, but that's that's the number one mobile ads. Yeah. Jeez. So then another question will be, uh, let's say now you play this way. One day, once once you get more and more people, they play more and more. Games. They will add higher quality. They yes. want yeah better experience. That's right. Yeah. So at that time, it costs. I'm just thinking. Yes. Oh, they got, that's why I need to license this. Yeah. So I need to ride on someone else's capital. Yeah. <laughs> because so, it's so expensive. Football is too flipping expensive. To how many this. How many different markets inside of pro sports does this scale to? Does like yeah. Tra great question. Um, yeah. So it doesn't scale to a ton. So originally, um, so it works good for football. Um, we originally thought it would work well for baseball, but we did a little case study with it and. Not really. There's not enough scoring opportunities for the fans. Um, it does not work in like um, soccer or anything that's fast paced and not coachable. Basketball. Not enough scoring opportunities for the fans in baseball? Yeah. Because the it's decision not a, maker is a pitcher? Yeah. yeah but isn't that just an interface issue on the pitcher then? Yeah, but there's not enough pitching diversity. Do you know where this is going to, this could be great? Is golf. So we've done a lot of work with golf, and now all of a sudden we're in with um, Top Golf a little bit because there's actually more. If you think of the gaming and the scoring aspect, there's a little bit more um, diversity in that than anything else. But if you think about football in general, just that market has a huge amount because you have um, every college has a college spring game, which is not governed by any NCAA rules, um, and it's a huge opportunity for them to keep the alumni base alive no matter where they're where they're at them. Um, so that is a huge opportunity. The Pro Bowl's an opportunity and um, exhibition games in the NFL. Mm -hmm. No one goes to them. So just that alone, if we can just tap that. 
And do you need a whole league involved, or could it be, you know, one team says every home game we have, I want to use Absolutely. That's right. Okay. Right. But the problem right now, the other hurdle we have, though, is whether it's at the NFL level or the NCAA, like, those are all governing bodies, obviously. Yeah. I know, like, um, there's some of the NFL games are streamed, uh, I don't know if they did any this year, but sometimes they're streamed on, like, Amazon's Yeah, uh, we've done all you guys would love if I threw up some data, but we pretty much... Every fall, we do a bunch of tests with like live NFL games. So like we did a couple weeks in a row, we did, um, cause remember every night is different. I'm gonna botch this, but let's say Sunday night is uh, CBS, Monday night is NFL, and Thursday night is ESPN. Every, yeah. they, that could be wrong, but they all own a night. So, and they all have their own streaming parts. Right. So for the month of October, every single night, we all, my whole team, no matter where we were, we all went online and we did different things, whether we were on Comcast, on, um, on uh, Verizon, uh, we were streaming through whatever they're streaming, because uh, one of them I forget does Amazon. So we have this huge spreadsheet of like all the different properties and it's remarkable. The, the, the quickest was, um, the least amount of latency was Comcast at like 17 seconds, all the way up to Dish was like almost two minutes. So we had, what we did is we had, for, for a couple of games, we had someone physically at different games, given the, low, like, we had just people who were season ticket holders, and they were at a Rams game, or a Patriots game, or whoever, a Jets game. So we would have, we'd pick a night where we knew somebody would physically at the game, and we would do a quarter, and they would call us, they'd be in the concourse, they'd have their phone on, and they'd be like, the ball snapped, and then we'd all have our own, you know, I was in charge of whatever, the stream that night. And so we'd all log in a spreadsheet from the time the person who's on site called what happened to who saw it on our stream. And the longest latency was Dish Network was like almost two minutes. That's unbelievable. It was unbelievable. The best was uh, consistently was, uh, it was either Verizon or Comcast, I can't remember, 17 seconds. Do you have any um, insights as a startup founder about like the position that you're at, right? Trying to next scale up like trying not to get depressed <laughs> keeping, keeping the team sort of like focused on goals things like it that it is so hard um yeah you know it's funny i have my two brother-in-laws are in the drone uh business so the two of us the, the they're the three of us are constantly like lamenting at different stages when we're like everything's great and then you're like <laughs> um <laughs> So the, 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 yeah, that is such a true question and it's so hard. Like right now, Jason was asking when we're doing our next series and like, I'm acting and motivating everybody towards a date and that date may blow up in my face tomorrow. It's been like a hellish two weeks and like I'm having problems locking down a certain part of the facility and blah, blah, blah. And so like, I'm kind of, Bummed, right I feel beat up and I'm like crap but I gotta go in and tell the team like nope keep doing what you're doing we gotta march towards this um, you know because we have marketing plans and we have football plans and we have things that we have to do like I have to keep them going so what I do is I I, I give them I create goals and we march towards them and if a roadblock comes I figure out how to get it out of my way because it's tough it's hard I feel like we need all need a moment of silence. Oh, totally. Yeah. I know this morning I'm like, can I drink now? Now I don't even want to drink. Yeah. I was thinking about that, like how you can actually use the, to think more about technology part, start making money. Right. I'll be like, can you, you basically talk about high school students, how can you engage them, like when their classmates maybe who is playing on the field, then they can do something, let's compete, things yeah. like that. Just not The problem really. is all those bodies, the problem with high school and, and college, and in the NFL, they're all governed by rules. Yeah. Right, so you NCAA rules, you have uh, MIAA here in Massachusetts, like there's so many. But that is, a, the biggest hurdles we face are uh, obviously keeping motivated as we try, because I believe this is gonna happen. And I've done it so I know it can work. I just don't know how quickly I can get a major. If I can get the Pro Bowl, 
to pop for me, then I think we've made it. Because then, mm -hmm. yeah. How do you um, sort of spread your time between like, uh, you know, managing the team, some of these yeah. relationships and... Um... So, uh, you know, the first, up until um, this summer, so I have a pretty, I feel really lucky. I have a great team. Everybody who works, so I only have five full-time employees, everyone else are contractors. Every single person in this startup, I got through my network. Every single person. So like, talk about, you don't, uh, you, I don't appreciate the power of my network until I had to use it. It's been awesome. Um, leading up to the first series that we did this past April and May in Florida, I was obviously driving the strategy, but also super hands-on. So even though I definitely have a management style of, I only feel like I'm as good as everyone who's around me. Like if you guys were all my team and worked for me, I want to make sure everyone, you get all the accolades. I like, I don't need the accolades because I'm like, if everyone who works for me is killing it, then I, by nature, I look good. Right. Is my theory in life and in management and it's always worked out great. And we, I did that for this first series, but I'm also a pretty good operations and a process person. And because this was very expensive and it had to work, I was pretty hands-on. So everything, if you can even imagine from when I had 100, 300 pound football players checking in for a training camp, like I set up the, the entire process of like, they get off a bus, they have station one, they got to check in. I had a shared Google sheet with seven stops that these mammoth players had to go through all the way to when they pick up their room key and they have to give us their banking information for direct deposit, right? right. So I can be really high up here, but I can go in, into the weeds pretty quickly. And I also, as a startup, you guys probably feel the same way. Like, I mean, there is nothing that's below me to do. You know, and I try to show that too to my, the, I have like three young kids out of college who work for me and I'm like, you know, like, if I'm gonna replace the toner, you're gonna replace the toner. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, and that's not below me and it's not below anybody, like that's what you do. Um, this time around, so to answer your question, like now that I know it works and we have all the processes in place, I don't have, to, I can't really do that anymore because our full, our sole focus right now is to get, I have like, enough people interested in this now I got to get them to commit so my job is like I, I everyone else has to make things hum and I gotta make sure we get people to like partner with us right so like for the I mean there's the licensing part mm -hmm. with other leagues and everything but for the you know the seasons like you did last um, yeah like with the episodes last year like yeah what's the goal of you know, do you want to do a 16-game season like the NFL season? Or? Um, probably not unless I can ride on someone else's capital. Right. It is just so expensive. Yeah. It, you just bleed money. So, like, there are two startup football leagues. I don't consider myself a startup football league. I consider myself a sports and gaming platform. Yeah. Um, there are two that are coming out in the spring. One's funded by Vince McMahon, who runs the WWE. One's funded by um, oh, XFL. XFL, yeah. right? So I'm actually in. Um, I have a very good relationship with Oliver Luck, who runs that. And to be quite honest, I, if him and I decide to merge and I be the innovative technology, and we, are my funder has the technology, and Vince wants to blow through 250 million, literally. Is it really like? A a tentpole movie in order to put on a season, a one game or season of games? Like It is, so for me to do four games with two teams, 100 people, insurance and everything, yeah. I'll take out the tent cost. That's three million bucks. Yeah. Just to do that. Insurance is a million dollars. That's for two teams. So now you take the XFL or the AAF, I mean their insurance is eight teams plus eight stadiums Yay. for 16 weeks. A production cost to do a two hour live stream production cost is about $100,000. Yeah. I mean, their numbers just go up, 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 out of the blue. You right. can't do it, it's so expensive. But Vince McMahon has a ton of money, he doesn't care. 
so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm so fascinated by this plot, this lower right quadrant, mm. right, and what motivates them. I mean, we're dealing the gamer. With the gamer. And uh, see, yeah. I think what motivates them is they can be the star. Mm. They can be the. They can be the um, Tom Brady. Right. But they still have. They're still fans of the Tom Brady. Not all of them. Well, no. I mean, no shoe. No shoe. But also down there, you know, remember sports gaming down there is big, but not as big as everything else. That's a, the other difference. You so know? on the, on your team, do you have more like people from the gaming industry or the sports industry? Or yeah, um, no, um, we are, so, I mean, definitely I look at it as four pillars. I, I always say I have football, I have distribution, I have marketing and I have the product. Right. The tech. Um, we're fairly evenly split. We've used um, we used a, uh, a firm here in Boston um, to help us with some of the gaming elements. Um, we use Cantina here in Boston. They do all the development and the coding. And uh, one of the guys is like my CTO. They're yeah. great. Um, and then, um, yeah. No, we have, it's pretty evenly across all four. Oh, great. Yeah, I need all four. Um, and, you know, again, everybody is through my network. I either work with them at Forrester or my VP of marketing, we went to college together, and she worked, um, she did all the NFL deals at Staples uh, back in the 90s and 2000s. So she kind of came with an amazing network to help on the distribution and football side and because of my tech background i kind of had all the tech and business ops people so between the two of us we like literally assembled mostly female uh, mostly female women who kind of had kick-ass jobs and then they kind of stayed at home a little bit and then they wanted to get back into it right. which was kind of fun <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my kids, my girls think it's pretty cool. They're like, wow, oh, that's fun, you know. So it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. <clears throat> In China, we would do, now, uh, the way we are doing it is make something happen very far away from you, like thinking about the Fizzot players yeah. playing. We would do it with social. That's how everything is connected with social. Yeah. So you can interact with your friends. Right. You can comedy. It's right, right on the screen. Yes, real time. So that's how Chinese people are doing. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. Internet yeah. things is huge in China. Yeah, like it's way uh, ahead than the U.S. Actually, yeah. So when we're doing this, yeah. So it's basically the way I think really you can make money and make it easy in real time is about social. Yeah. It's more about connecting people. They just want to talk shit together. Absolutely. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's one of the things if you look at uh, these football games uh, on video, uh, the video game. Platform. Yes, they're all tweeting. Madden and and uh, the first person shooters, they all, they all sort of constantly they always you know, talk to each other. Right. But the thing so about that it's is. It's the same game people can yeah. keep playing every year. But it's like the way we do it is on the screen. You don't even have to tweet, go to. Tweet. No, 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 I know. Like you if you're watching shit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah. no. Plus, like if you're on Facebook Live and you oh, see yeah, stuff yeah, coming yeah. Yeah, no, no, yes. totally. yeah. No, it's fun. So it's funny because the new features we have, we were going to put that in, and people, we got some user feedback saying because they have to impact the live game and mm -hmm. they want to vote, yeah. they didn't want to be distracted by that. Yeah, so it was so a weird. It's a friction. Yeah, I mean that's and the I don't game know the is perfect for gamer. Yeah, but it's not perfect for the social. Yeah, but it's I mean it's not perfect for the business. I would say from making money. money. Yeah, so right. that's why I said that. It's well, we have three. We definitely came out of it with three personas, if you will. Mm -hmm. So like the card sharks, we kind of label them the ones who were like all about like they wanted to win. They were voting on every play. Um, the more avid people who were just like, they like football, and then there was a smaller social, that's how we label them, and I actually thought we'd have more social, but they didn't get it. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I'm just thinking how to make yeah. money, because I'm, yeah. like, I'm doing startups, like it's more like, aspect of make it. Is, yeah. Absolutely, competitive, dominating. Mm. Yes, and we're struggling. Yeah, 
It's all the biggest thing is the mobile. The biggest thing is that the live stream is awesome in the phone, mm -hmm. and that once you get in, even if you don't vote, once you get in the live. Oh, my phone keeps going back and forth. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally, it's the one night, my, also I tried to say my husband's a middle school principal, and tonight is his, um, he has to present his budget to like this, whatever, school committee, and yeah. he's like, wait, what do, you, what do you mean you have something to vote? I'm like, I have, he's like, uh, what, what are, and we like never like throw our kids in Ubers or crap like that, and like literally tonight, I've done it twice already, and I'm like, ah, you know, like I'm following <laughs> them because I feel so uncomfortable. So sorry, the little one's like, Mom. Uh, <laughs> Once there was a startup called Zemcar that was going to handle that for you and have trusted drivers. I know, I know, I know. Well, the oldest will be home from college, so it's fine. Sunday I'll be able to, she'll be my Uber. So. Um, <laughs> but yes, dying to get like the, like the biggest thing we can is say that even if you don't vote, you can live stream it in here and you'll still see the mobile app. And at the end of the day, that's what they care. The mobile ad people just care about a captive audience. Mm -hmm. But you're absolutely right. It needs the yeah. WeChat integration. Yeah. 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 So. This is fascinating. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah. I appreciate the support, and I'm, I'm no different than you guys slogging it out. Um, it's. I think the only thing I have is that I have a funder with deep pockets who doesn't care and I think that's a <laughs> blessing and a curse to be brutally honest. Is he yes. is this investor right like does he see the rays of hope like at, at every yes. test and every milestone he's like yes, yes keep going. Yes. <clears throat> and I do too. I see it there. Um but it's to your point like I'm used to like even when I worked in Forrester and I launched a new product, I you know, you generate revenue. Yeah. yeah. Right. Do you, have you had a, have you, the two of you had a conversation where you say like there is sort of a, a no go point? Where yeah, I've said it to him. We're going to do one more series, and um, if we can't get a couple of licensing deals out of it, then I think it's silly for him to mm -hmm. burn through money because you know he still owns the patents. We could fire them back up again, um, but you really have to. It's football is. And that is like if we can ride on someone else's capital, like those licensing things, this is a home run. And do you have really um, like powerful in the moment marketing videos from those events where people are like voting and screaming? Yeah, and pictures of people yeah on online. our socials. If you guys, I'd love for you to follow us on social. Our YouTube channel has our games too, which are really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So. Okay. Yeah, definitely download well, thank it. Thank you guys. Okay. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. Right. Um, okay, so the game ticket? Like yeah. a real winner? So we don't, what do you mean, a ticket to the game? Yeah. No, we don't do, we don't generate revenue. But we should, we can. Yeah, but you can do that. I mean, it's <laughs> all the I'm hiring her. She's like more driven than me right now. She's got to make money right now. Yeah, I'm doing protein bars. Like, you can have your player eating my protein bars <laughs> and protein. All right, talk yeah. about an expensive yeah. venture. You're creating your own protein bar to compete yes. with all the other thousands of protein bars out yes. there? Yes. Yeah, I like you. Yeah. It's like, yeah. we, What's the we name of it? It's Hemp League, our company. We, we are more hemp focused. So it's different than, than our. It's, it's you similar. mean hemp? H E M P? Yes, hemp. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's like. good for you. It's good for your health, yeah. health, yeah. And the Do you know what my trainer says? Anything that's stuck together isn't good for you. What do you mean? Oh, the fit, my fitness bar. trainer says, I'm not allowed to eat. Anything that's stuck together, you shouldn't eat. That's his rule of thumb. <laughs> so like, I was a huge bar, like, you know, everyone eats those protein health bars yeah. because, you know, you're busy, you're on the go. And I have a history of heart disease in my family. And when I went for like my physical, they, they were like, you should be careful. And what are you eating? And I'm like, I, I eat really well on my yeah. run. And, and then they're like, what do, they made me write down what I ate. And I was yeah. like, I have like a Luna bar a day or something. Oh, else. oh yeah. yeah. And they were like, I know. Any, yeah. and so his whole line to me was anything that's stuck together. Yeah, that's why we we don't make it sticky. We basically put oh. things together, then it's a bar. We don't process it. Oh. Yeah, it's all raw ingredients raw put cold. together. Yes, and our hand is totally cold pressed. We don't use any like 
high process. And you're already producing and selling? Oh yeah, we were selling. You need to get some testing? You're gonna yeah, give me sure. one? <laughs> <laughs>